Please welcome Chief Customer Success Officer, Craig Fulton. All right. All right, good eye, mites. <laughs> Worked on that for a month. It's about as good as it gets. All right, hey, welcome everyone. IT Nation Connect Australia. Uh, how many of you have taken the long flight over to Orlando when we hold it there? All right, hey, look, bless your hearts because that flight over the Pacific is scary. It's kind of like there's no turning back. I don't know why that ocean is so much bigger than the Atlantic and it's frightening. Um, but we're happy to be here. Um, you know, first time having IT Nation here. Uh, I've met a lot of you uh, about 10 years ago, so it's good to see you again. And let's get into what we're doing. So we've got 504 attendees at this event, um, you know, between partners and um, our exhibitors and ConnectWise colleagues. And I like to get into some stats, you know, what is it y'all are doing? 79% of you are doing managed services. 6% managed security for cloud services. So you can get a feeling for who's here. Doesn't equal 100, so I'm not sure what everyone else is doing. <laughs> Other. Uh, they're doing shoeys, is what I heard that you guys like to do. Um, look, these are some phenomenal numbers. You guys should be proud of yourselves, because 54% uh, of you are making more than 7 million in uh, annual revenue. You know, in the States, that number is usually about four or five. All right, so that's pretty good. Anybody here work on technology? 80% are managers or higher, so we've got a lot of entrepreneurs here, business owners, founders, senior managers, right? So you know who you're talking to. 35% um, of you have 20 to 49 employees. That's also really high. In the States, again, and at those events, and when we had it in Europe, it was around 15 to 25. So very healthy community down here. Um, what else do we have? We've got 24 great exhibitors out there. Our diamond sponsor, Cisco, you know, they're here talking about uh, what they're doing with security and networking, along with our other great sponsors. We have 50 breakout sessions, and, and breakout sessions are great because we have partners come here and teach things. We have ConnectWise colleagues here. We've got industry professionals, 50 great sessions, and um, five networking events. So we had the one last night. We got one tonight. You saw this, uh, the thing lit up there, 10, 7 to 10 at the pool. I might be sleeping. Um, and then tomorrow, I don't know if you saw the guy, Anthony Lay is here. Uh, the guy's pretty, pretty slick. I watch a lot of his videos, and he's a human behavioral specialist, and uh, he's a mind reader. <laughs> Hopefully he's not going to read my mind. It's not good. And uh, so... We were excited to have him here because he's really good at picking up on cues on people and reading their body language and can communicate very effectively to them. And I think that's something that's great for our partners to learn because we deal with people, right? We're in the service industry. Look, I talked about this. We were here for the first time almost 10 years ago to the day. We had our first user group in 2009. I do recognize a couple people. I see Fuzzy on there, I see uh, Tim Brewer. Who else is in this picture? Raise your hand if you're in this picture, okay. Oh, I see Michael. All right, look, I didn't come until 2011, and that was an interesting one. <laughs> Those of you who might remember it, we went out to dinner, the restaurant caught on fire, the sprinklers ruined all the meat, and we went somewhere else, I arm wrestled almost everybody, and then I became Facebook friends with a few of you and this was fun because you're watching my life going, hey, look at this Bogan. And I'm like, Bogan? Oh, so dear. They, they got a nickname for me. And I'm bragging to my friends that I'm a Bogan. <laughs> <laughs> and someone says, hey, man, you need to Google that. I look, I'm like, oh. Well, guess what? We've been acquired by Tom Bravo and now a cashed up Bogan. <laughs> All right? So who wins now? <laughs> Thank you, it did work. And, and you know, can I tell you something? When you go to Europe and you tell a joke, the Brits just sit there. That's not funny. So, so thank you for that. All right, I wanna talk about this because this was big news. A month ago, Toma Bravo acquired ConnectWise. This is a great thing for us. Um, they're making some heavy investments in some things I'm gonna talk about next, but they are the leading private equity firm in technology. We're proud to be a part of, of them and having them help us move forward. So what does this mean for you? Okay, 
Uh, when they came along, they said, hey, at ConnectWise, we want to help you get focused on customer success. And that's how I ended up in the role I'm in. Those of you that know me or seen me around a while, right, I've been on the product team for a long time, six years. I was the chief product officer. And they said, we need to get someone focused on this, help you know, uh, work with our partners better, uh, work on retention, keep you around. And so I, I took on this role of uh, customer success officer. And I now oversee every department that you interact with. So I'll be here the next couple days. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have some things you want to tell me that could be wrong. That's OK. Uh, but I also like to hear things that are working right. But um, these are all the things we're focused on. So we want to build a stronger community. We do not want to let go of that. We know that this strong community, you, our partners, are what make ConnectWise what it is. OK, we're going to continue to invest in that. Our user groups, you know, ConnectWise Share, ConnectWise Evolve, ConnectWise, I'm sorry, IT Nation. They're going to kill me for getting that wrong. I'm so sorry. IT Nation Connect, IT Nation Explore, IT Nation Evolve. We're going to continue to invest in that. In our consulting, um, we're doing more than product consulting. We're investing in business consulting with our Stratop process that helps you create strategy in your business and set goals and improve your business. Our education team, we're ramping up our education we give you. Um, we want you to understand what it is a platform does for you, just not the features, but why, right? We're doing some work there. Our support, look, I've heard it all, okay? Um, I worked on a help desk for eight years, so I understand some challenges. We're making some improvements here. We're getting a new chat. We're getting machine learning built into it, some artificial intelligence. We can help you faster. We're going to remove the escalations. That kind of bothers me, too, because I know you get delays in that. Um, we're working on our knowledge base articles, uh, and we want to deliver support to you and knowledge to you when it matters. So um, watching the usage of the product, we want you to use more of it, right? You don't have to buy more of it, just use more of it. Um, it's a pretty um, powerful tool. And then working, you know, evolving the software around customer success, because as we learn how to help you be successful, we want to update the product so that you can be successful with your customers as well. And then getting closer with our partners for best practices. So as we do this, right, we're, we're bringing this back. This is something we used to talk about a lot, and we, we steered away from it. This is important to me. We have our success pyramid, right? We, we are going to continue to engage with our partners that will not stop. And we'll learn best practices from you. We'll incorporate them into the software. I told you we're doing support, education, consulting, community, because we want to help you be successful in whatever that is. The lifestyle you want, the growth you want in your business, we want to help you do that faster than ever. Um, we're doing some great things we're going to start introducing this year. We're measuring the maturity of your business and the, the health and how you use the platform. We're going to help you get better. OK. And at ConnectWise, we believe that technology is creating a better future. Now, what does this mean, right? Now, 10, 15 years ago, a lot of your customers, they could run their business and have a little technology and still be competitive. And we know that today, your customers have to have technology. They can't exist without it. So that means there's a lot of technology out there that you can manage. OK, this is what we believe is the future. This is what we've set our strategy on and going forward. So let's get into what we're going to do here at IT Nation Connect and what I'm going to talk about with you for the next 20 minutes. And then I'm going to introduce Arlen Sorensen. Um, he's going to talk about business maturity. You know, uh, those of you who know Arlen, he was with HTG, now can, uh, IT Nation Evolve. He's going to share what he has learned there. And John Ford is our new Chief Information Security Officer. We're going to have him up here talk about security. So we're going to cover these three, three things. So I'm going to talk about as a service first and what this means. OK, because I know a lot of you go, yeah, I know as a service. I, I picked up some new solutions out here, and I'm going to buy them, and I'm going to deliver them to the customer, and I'm going to invoice them. It's more than that. Right? So these are, this is all the technology you can deliver to a customer. You know, I won't read them all off, but copy, print, office applications, cloud computing. And we understand that. And look at the opportunity you have in delivering managed technology. Now, this is interesting because I remember eight to 10 years ago getting interviewed a lot about the cloud. The cloud is going to destroy managed services. What's going to be our future? Because all of these customers are going to go to these vendors, and they won't need us anymore. 
That has not been the case. Okay, look at the opportunity we have. And then look at the opportunity we have in the future, right? Security is really gonna be a big one, but we've almost have double the opportunity globally. All right, so knowing that, I wanna give you a little lesson about what I've learned in this community, interacting with you, the partners, doing some research, and I wanna help you move forward, ensure you can capture as much as as you can. Let's talk about as a service. As a service is about a customer experience. It is not about customer support. People say this all the time. Oh yeah, I have a great customer experience. My help desk, they're very friendly, and they get back to people on time, and when a customer's upset, and they make them happy, and we never say no. That's not what I'm talking about, right? Customer experience is about the whole chain of you working with a customer, from marketing all the way through to invoicing. And that's where ConnectWise comes in, because we have a platform that handles all of that, okay? And this is a great thing that I I keep seeing on LinkedIn popped up, and this is true. It's a customer's world. We're living in it. Things have changed. Ten years ago, we owned the relationship. We got the customer to buy technology, invest heavily in the infrastructure. We'd lock them into a contract, and we'd say, here you go, call me when it's broken, and I'll proactively fix things. And the customer wouldn't really go anywhere because switching costs were high. Right, but now with the cloud, now with technology, and now with subscription services, the ball is now in the customer's court. Right, you have to win them over every month and get them to buy, and let's talk about that. So um, these are things that we all used to say were differentiators in our business. I've got a great unlimited remote support. I do proactive monitoring of your devices. I give you quarterly business reviews. I do endpoint security. And You could differentiate with this, but really not anymore. These are the table stakes. This is what everyone's doing. And the customers, your prospects, are going to know how are you going to differentiate yourself in an as-a-service world. Here are the differentiators that we see happening. As we move into this, we see the partners that are outcome-focused doing really well. What I mean outcome-focused is talking to the customer, talking to the prospect, and saying, Here's what the technology is going to do for your business so that you're productive and you have uptime. Right, I love to use this example of a construction company, right? Understand the construction company and say, yeah, I know that you have to share blueprints and schedule subcontractors. I understand that, and this solution is going to help you get to that outcome. Right, so you're going to really have to understand the customer and what it is the technology is doing for them. They don't want to hear about the gigahertz and the RAM and the speed. They don't care. Those days are over. The customer wants to know, what are you gonna do for my business? Next level, proactivity. Right, I talked about uh, in the, on the table stakes, um, and I laughed because look, I kept hearing people say table stakes. I'm like, what is this? Is this like table wine? You know, remember I'm a bogan? Is this like meat you're bringing me? No, this is a poker thing. So anyway, um, the, the proactivity that's a table stake, <laughs> medium rare, is putting an agent out there and auto-fixing something before the customer knows. This proactivity is watching how they're using the service in their business and then helping them get better at it, right? Watching how they're using the file sharing service, watching how they're using Office and saying, well, you could, your business could be better if you use these features or you did these things, right? Getting really focused on that. Um, alignment of expectations, right? The customer has expectations the technology is going to do for things for them, and you got to make sure it meets that because the customers have gotten smarter because of cell phones. They know what technology can do, and they need you to connect that for them. And then security, this is the obvious one. The days of just antivirus, malware, a firewall ain't going to cut it. You've got to up your game there. Okay? And then here's what else we know. We watch you know, um, how you use ConnectWise. We interact with a lot of you, and what we see is that the first six to nine months is the most critical time with your customer, and I bring this up because you really should look at your own business and see what you're doing here, because we see a lot of churn or customers leave in this time period. This is the most important time. We know this is obvious. This is where you're gonna build the loyalty. We call it attitudinal loyalty, all right? Because look, they're not gonna be happy all the time, but are they gonna stay? Is the experience that much better? Right, I think, uh, do you guys have Amazon down here? I don't know why, no, okay, bad example. But anyway, I love Amazon, their experience, even though they deliver packages to the wrong place sometimes, I still keep going there. 
because I can order stuff anywhere. Um, but look, you gotta look at this in your business too. The first six to nine months, we know this because we talk to you and we hear this is what happens. The customer comes, they don't, you don't meet their expectation, you don't differentiate yourself and they go. All right, so look at what you're doing. And we build things into the platform to make sure you're good here. Okay, we've got things, workflow rules, we've got um, integrations with solution uh, partners to make sure you're delivering differentiators. What else, right? Ease of adoption. Now this is something that is becoming very common, people are talking about, adoption services. Right, there's a partner in the United States that sells Cisco collaboration, you know, WebEx and the screens, and used to just go out and set the stuff up and put it there and tell one person to the company, here it is, see you later, call me when it breaks, but I'll be watching it and I'll fix it if it does, but go for it. Now does adoption services, right? Make sure that his clients know how to use it, they're not wasting the first 15 minutes of every meeting trying to get the thing to work. You know, monitoring, you know, logging into the Cisco management uh, console there, watching how they're using it, and then reaching out proactively and saying, why aren't you using this? I sold it to you, it'd be really great for you. Um, and then giving them training. Symbols of quality, also very important. What do I mean by that? Right, like this hotel has their symbols of quality. They wake you up at 5 p.m. to give you chocolate. <laughs> I don't really like that symbol of quality. It's a little jet lag. But you gotta get these in your business too. What are the things that stand out in your business that's different from everyone else that the customer will attach themselves to and then build loyalty with? Provide insights, I talked about this. Understanding the business of your customer and providing insights to them. Like if you use this technology, it will increase your productivity by 6%. Do these things. And then I, um, I brought this one up earlier, ABC, we call it always be closing, always be connecting because you have to win the customer over every month. I've met partners now that are so advanced in this concept um, that they don't even do yearly contracts anymore. They just tell the customer, look, just start paying me monthly. We are that confident in what we do, and this is a big differentiator for them because their competitors are still doing yearly. We're this confident, you'll love us, you'll continue to pay us and come back pay monthly, and then you better believe it in that company, it also holds them accountable to make sure they're delivering the best service possible, the best experience. Okay, then we got four metrics, right? When you talk about as a service, the days of looking at what's our utilization rate and what's our effective rate on these agreements, right? Those things, um, important, but these are some key metrics to help you drive value in your business. And when Arlen comes up here to talk about the value of your business, you know, when someone's looking at it, they're gonna ask you these questions. What's your churn, right? Churn, very easy, is the amount of customers or services that leave, right? We see churn get high whenever you sell a customer a lot of stuff and they don't adopt it all at once. They start saying, I don't need that, I don't need that, I don't need that, and you're churning down. Churn can also be a good thing because you wanna look at your customers on a regular basis and see which ones aren't so great for us and churn them out. You wanna have just a high number of quality customers. So that's what churn is. And you wanna look at this number because you wanna know the activities you're doing in your business are having a positive effect. And that plays right into retention. You wanna retain your good customers. You want them to retain the services you're getting, right? So you'll watch this metric um, and, and then just watch the activities you do to make sure it has a positive impact. We say this, you know, now at ConnectWise, as I'm taking over the customer success teams, hey, if you're doing something like a survey or um, you know, reaching out and, and emailing every second thing, if it's not having any impact on this number, stop doing it. And I've met partners that do that too. They go, oh, I got this great idea. We're gonna, we're gonna survey every third customer randomly, um, you know, not tell the colleagues that we're doing that. And they start doing it, and I say, great, now you know this, but what has it done for retention or churn or nah, nothing? I'm like, then stop. It's not doing any good. That's why it's important to look at these. And then these last two very key metrics to help understand the value you're driving in your business, cost to acquire customers, or customer acquisition costs. Um, you should know this because you'll be surprised. I've met a lot of partners, they do this formula, and they're like, whoa, I spend $20,000 to get a customer and I lose many. <laughs> this is a lot of wasted money. 
look, I've learned this at Connect Wise too, which is why I'm here trying to fix it. Um, you know, you can you take your sales costs, your marketing costs, your onboarding costs, divide that over the number of customers you get. Voila, simple math. Even the Bogan understands it. It's five thousand dollars acquire a customer. It's important to know that number. It's important to know because customers are hard to come by. Some of you only get a couple a year. Some of you really good get a couple a week. But you know, you're going to start trading customers, and it's important to know how much it's going to cost you because it goes in the lifetime. Uh, total value, LTV, okay, this is a very complicated one, but I'll just give you some quick math. Let's say you have a 40% margin, your churn is 2% a month on services and customers, your average MR is 5,000, lifetime value is 100. This is good to know. It's good to know because you can see the things you're doing in your business, especially retention, and see if it's driving this number up because it helps increase the value of your business. It helps increase the customer experience you're giving. When these numbers start getting better, you know your customer is getting a good experience because they're sticking around. And then here's another thing I love to do, right? You always want to know, like, well, how good am I compared to everybody else? You know, you can ratio this out. Like, okay, I did 20,000 at customer acquisition costs, 100,000, I'm one to five, that's good. One to three, one to seven, and that range is pretty good. Right? If you're not in that range, you want to start doing things in your business to reduce churn, drive up retention, and get this number better. Right? If it's lower than one to three, that means you're spending a lot of money and customers are leaving. Now, if it's higher than one to seven, some of you say, oh, this is good, making a lot of money. But it could be that you're not churning enough because, again, there is a healthy amount of churn. And I would recommend read the books, subscribe, or customer success goes into detail in a lot of this. Okay, and if you want a lot more detail, I, I did cover the high level. Uh, we've got these webinars that are recorded and out there and we're still running them as we learn things from uh, our partners and what you guys are doing. Connectwise.com slash path to success. Okay, I'm almost done. Now, let's make this real simple. I love to do this. I know it's obvious, but I really like to do this. So let's say you have a $10 million business. How many people have a $10 million business and want to share that? Oh, that's right, everybody has a $7 million business. I said that right. Well, let's say you do. Simple math. You sell some products, you sell some project work and services by the hour, and you have recurring services. These are the multipliers we see on those parts of your business. All right, it really comes down to those three things. Products, your pro professional services, your recurring services. Let's say that $10 million business equates to this, doing a lot of product and a little recurring this business is only worth $5 million on average, right? If you were to go off and sell it, value it, this is what it would be. Now watch when we flip this. Real simple math. This is like a magic trick I have here. I'm just trying to pull my Anthony Lay tricks out. Now let's take the same business but put a lot more on the recurring revenue. Let's say you're doing $6 million in recurring revenue, right? It's more than half your business, 60%. This is a $16.5 million business. Still $10 million annual revenue, but it's worth a lot more because they got focused on as a service. And we're watching partners do this. Get real serious about that. And I know you're thinking, Craig, we've been doing this for like 10 years. Managed service is nothing new. But this is an evolution of managed services, right? Because again, with managed services, you were focused on the technology and not so much on the customer. Now you gotta really get focused on the customer. We're supporting customers, not technology. All right, real easy. Which one do you want? <laughs> I want the one on the right. Now, uh, if you want to take some principles or concepts back to your office to start driving change, it's real simple. As a service comes down to these four basic concepts. One, you want to make sure they're adopting your products and services in the technology. Make sure they're adopting it. Make sure they're satisfied. They may not be happy all the time, but are they satisfied? Because once they are, whoop, once they are, they will buy more. You can sell them more. Again, we watch partners, those that try and sell everything at the beginning fail. You gotta start with something small, get them to adopt it, get them loyal, and then sell them more. You'll be more successful. And then make sure you have activities to retain them. Okay, I'm gonna give you some product updates. 
and then I'll turn it over. So what are we doing to help you deliver as a service? We're building dashboards. We, we're working, um, John's gonna talk to you about ConnectWise Identify, our, uh, yeah, it is Identify, sorry. ConnectWise Identify, our security product, our new customer portal, because look, I've seen the old one too. It is embarrassing, but we got a new one. It was like, it looks like something from like Office 97 in MS Paint. Not now. The marketplace, what we're doing in the marketplace, you can deliver technology as a service. And then our single sign-on, and then look, we've got a lot of other, I won't get into all these uh, details here, but we're doing a lot of work on the product team uh, to help you deliver technology as a service. Here's our new portal. You can brand it however you want. Look at that. You don't have to give them that sign-in screen that is very old. You can build it however you want, and we're making this integrate to their Active Directory, so they're not asking you, what was the password for that? They'll have single sign-on too, right? This is in pilot right now, and is rolling out next month. They can come in, work on their tickets very easily, update their tickets, get in touch with you, they can see their invoices, easily pay their invoices. We understand this is about an experience and we want you to deliver a great experience. This is just the start, and we're gonna keep adding more in there. We're, we're only three months work on this, and we're already releasing it. We just wanna get it out now, and then we'll, we'll keep building upon it. And we're gonna allow our solution partners that are out there to integrate into this too. This is our single sign-on. It doesn't look like this, okay? Because I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute, you're going back to the old portal look? Uh, look, what, what kind of graphic can I do? It's a sign-in. But what's important is this single sign-on service is, is going to allow you to integrate everything together, including our solution partners, and single sign-in, and then do dual-factor authentication on that so you have everything secured into one login. I know we have been behind on the login, but we've been working on this for about two years, and it is now rolling out. It is rolling out now. If you log into each product, you'll start to see there is uh, additional authentication information there. Um, OAuth and SAML. Okay. <laughs> and it, <laughs> the login won't look like this. I made that on the plane on the way here. I thought it looked good. <laughs> this is our new dashboards. And I know what you're thinking. Hey, welcome to 2012. We have dashboards now on ConnectWise. So when you log in, we are going to try, uh, no, sorry, sorry. We are going to change the experience of ConnectWise to be very user-centric, right? If you look at Manage Now when you log in, it's like, hey, here's how your business is set up. Now find your job through this menu. We're flipping this, and we're going to present your job to you in this new dashboard, and we're going to start to build a new interface on top of this that is simpler to use. So this is about to roll out as well next month. Um, new dashboards and Manage. Uh, you know, being able to see a dashboard per customer, um, dashboards and automate. And again, these are going to become very customer success focused because we know you have to deliver technology as a service and we're going to start building these things in here. Retention rates, churn rates, CAC, LTV. We're going to build these things in. This is what we've always done at ConnectWise. We learn from you and we put it in the product. In a very modern way, <laughs> Like Google, you will see all the applications you have and quickly jump between them. Okay, and in the marketplace, finish it up with this. This is a key part of delivering technology as a service because you need one place to quickly go and get the solutions you want to deliver to your customer, and then one click get it, and then we'll automatically start billing the customer for it how you need to. We'll automatically allow you to start managing it inside of the platform, right? This is also in pilot right now, about to roll out. All of this stuff will be rolled out by IT Nation Explorer in June. Okay. Now, uh, if you want to hear any more details of the customer success part, I've got a lot more details to offer. I'm doing a breakout session tomorrow before I take off out of here to the Barrier Reef. I got to see this thing. Everybody keeps saying it's almost gone. I'm going to go see it. But I'll be doing this tomorrow with Brian Troy, uh, another great resource at ConnectWise. Um, tomorrow, 4 to 5, going to join us if you want to hear more and bad jokes. Okay, let's keep rolling. So I'm going to introduce to the stage Mr. Arlen Sorensen to talk about business maturity. Thank you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Please welcome Vice President of Brand Ecosystem Evangelism, right, Alan Sorensen. Good morning. Thanks for joining us at IT Nation Connect. Craig kind of focused on the customer experience and the way that you interact with your customers. I want us to step back and I want to take a look at you and your business and the important role that focusing on that's going to play as you think about the future. But before we start, I want to, I want to remind you that uh, we are still you. Arnie may have left the day-to-day -day active uh, operations of the company, but we have more people that have sat in your seat with, in our organization today than we've ever had. With the uh, influx of the HTG team, with John's Sienna team, we've got a lot of folks that have got a lot of experience sitting in your seat, and we're committed to helping you grow your company and move to a more mature place. My journey started with ConnectWise back in 2003. Arnie came to the farm, that's where I live, that bottom picture, and uh, implemented ConnectWise for our IT company, uh, HTS at the time. Uh, I also did an implementation in 2009 for HTG and another one in 2012 for HTS Ag, which is my IT, or my precision ag company. So I've implemented three times with, uh, with ConnectWise in my career. And it, it's been a critical part of growing and becoming successful. But what happened last year was we were acquired and we brought together ConnectWise's focus on partner success with our focus on business success. And today that's what IT Nation is all about. And the Evolve peer groups really are our way to try and go deep with you and help grow your business to maturity. We have a couple of different options in terms of, of uh, Evolve uh, groups. And you can come to a lunch today or tomorrow in the veranda room and hear from members that are part of the Evolve program, meet with Stu Applegate, who's our program director of that, and learn more about it. But we're committed to helping you mature your business. And what we see is kind of a four-phase approach that companies go through on the way to becoming more mature. First one we call muscle and feel. And the statistic that I found uh, from, from the government database was that in Australia, less than 2.3% of companies ever get beyond 20 employees. Now it's impressive that 35% of you in the audience have, have already got over 20 employees. Uh, this, is a, this is a great group of partners. But it's tough to grow a business. And muscle and feel is where all companies start. An entrepreneur probably accidentally starts a business because they're good at either taking care of the customer or fixing things. They hire some other people around them because they can't keep up and all of a sudden they're trying to run a company. And muscle and feel is all about really doing it with gut and grit. And that's how most companies start, and a lot of them get stuck. In the US, the data says that less than 6% of companies ever get to 10 employees. So we don't have a 20 employee number, but it's hard to grow a business. The biggest mistake I see, okay, and if you don't remember anything else I say, you need to remember this. People believe that if they work hard in their business, someday that's going to translate to revenue, to a sale with value. Hard work does not equal value. People do not buy a company to work hard. They buy a company because it's got value and it will provide a return over time. So you have to focus on creating a company of value. I got a call from a partner a few weeks ago and he was talking to me about his last eight weeks and how he had logged over a hundred hours a week in his in in manage and he, he was looking for a pat on the back that he was really working hard and he was going to grow this thing and i said man that this is not how you get there working hard is not ever going to get you to where you want to go we have to work obviously unless you're craig and you just get up and look good 
But it's important. <laughs> I, I owed you that. <laughs> it's important that we understand what's got value in the marketplace. Okay, none of us will take our business with us. It's going to transition. And even if it's going to family or some other kind of transition, we need to be creating value. And a big part of that is learning how to move beyond muscle and feel and not getting stuck there. When I look at the marketplace, I see four kinds of companies. The first one I call servitude. This company is where the entrepreneur lives to work. That's all they think about. Get up in the morning, go do their job, and tomorrow they get up and do the same thing again. That's not going to be something that's going to carry a lot of value in the marketplace. People aren't looking to buy those kind of companies because all the customer relationships are with that individual entrepreneur. So we have to move beyond that. Second kind of company I see is the lifestyle company. In this case, the entrepreneur works to live. They build their business in a way that it funds the lifestyle they want to have. Now, a lot of people kind of think lifestyle business is not something you want to do, but if it's done right, it can be a very, very successful model. The key is in a lifestyle business, you have to put the money away as you earn it because, at, again, at the end, it's not going to have a lot of value in the marketplace because it's all tied to the entrepreneur. The third kind of business we see are growth businesses. These are companies that want to go up and to the right on a consistent basis. They're trying to grow in terms of revenue, also in terms of profitability. This is the kind of company that people really want to buy because there's a good probability that it will return in a way that they can actually pay for it. And the fourth one is the hypergrowth company. In a hypergrowth model, people trade their time and treasure for a period of time to try and rapidly get from point A to point B, knowing that they're going to sell the company at that point. That either works really, really well, or it becomes a big failure. There's not a lot in between there. You need to figure out which kind of company you want to run. They all work, but you can't be jumping back and forth. And certainly, you have to be clear to your team what you're trying to accomplish and what the end game is. We'll talk more about that. When you move from muscle and feel to the next phase, we call that managing to what good looks like. And that's where you really begin to understand what, what's possible. That's where you begin to see benchmarking numbers. And you understand that, hey, maybe I can do better. One of the things that happens in the Evolve peer groups is we benchmark financials. Over 300 different financial metrics. And when people come to their first meeting and see those benchmarks for the first time, a lot of times they walk in thinking they're doing really, really good until they see what others are doing. And they understand that uh, there's, there's room for improvement here. I can do better. We all need to figure out where those areas are we can improve and begin to manage to those. That's how we move our companies forward to the next level. And the way we do that is with planning. Everybody should have got a copy of the Planning for Success workbook. This contains different templates and activities to help you begin to plan how you can manage to what good looks like. It won't happen if you don't have a plan. Knowing that you can do better won't make any difference. It's when you actually execute a plan consistently over time you can work your way through it. The four plans are, are really tied together. It starts with legacy. What's the long-term outcome I want from my business and my life? We need to paint a picture of that so we know what we're trying to accomplish. That can then be translated into three annual plans, where we take a one-year slice of our personal legacy plan, and we call that our life plan. What do I need to do in my life this year to move me toward that legacy I want to have personally? Our business plan is a one-year slice of what our business legacy is. What do I need to do in my company this year to move me toward that legacy? Leadership spans both because we have to lead both in our personal life and in our business. What do I need to do in the next 12 months to get better as a leader myself? And how do I invest in the people around me to help them become better? So after we have annual plans defined, 
then we can break it down into quarterly goals and objectives. And from that, create our weekly and daily activities that we're going to execute and be accountable to. This is how we can drive success. Knowing where we want to go, breaking it down into annual, quarterly, and daily objectives, and then being accountable to execute it. Most of us as entrepreneurs run our own business because we want to be our own boss. That's the whole beauty of being an entrepreneur. The problem is, as entrepreneurs, we don't necessarily do the things we ought to do. We do the things we want to do. Planning will help hold us accountable. And when we get involved in a community like this, and we leverage one another to help raise that accountability, we can drive success even deeper. Edison has the, the uh, quote that I love the most. Vision without execution is hallucination. A lot of us are hallucinating in our businesses because we're not executing. We have ideas, but we don't really execute. That's the key to planning. That's how we move through managing what good looks like to the next phase, which is building teams around us that can then execute the strategy. As an entrepreneur, we're gonna run out of gas at some point. We cannot carry the company to the end all by ourselves. We have to surround ourselves with good people. We have to build into those people. We have to get them on the same page, okay? We have to know where we're trying to go with our legacy, and then we have to communicate that with the people around us. This is where we have to communicate with our teams so they know what's going on. This is where a, a tool like StratOp is so important that helps us define strategy in a way that everyone can connect to it. StratUp is the tool that we've chosen to use as part of the IT Nation. But there's a lot of good planning tools out there. EOS, Gazelles, they all work. Pick a tool, use the tool, and communicate that with your team. Manage your team to help you get to the goal that you're trying to achieve. We're committed to providing you the best platform possible for your growth, okay? And we know that M&A is gonna be a huge part for a lot of you in achieving your long-term strategy as a growth mechanism. As Craig talked about with, with customer acquisition cost, there's not a lot of greenfield customer opportunities out there. Everybody's got an IT relationship today. So the cost of acquisition is going up. And M&A is becoming a very uh, cost-effective way to go out and find those customers rather than do it through the traditional marketing approach. Surveys that we have done say that 70% of MSPs around the world plan to do something around M&A in the next five years. There's a lot of action going on, and we know that's going to continue. The fourth phase of the entrepreneurial journey is what we call leading toward legacy. This is where we get a team in place underneath, focused on the goal, and we can really look to drive that legacy that we've had set in front of us. We can achieve the things we really want to accomplish. There's two kinds of legacies we need to define. That's our personal legacy, what we want the impact of life to be, and the business legacy, what we're trying to accomplish with our business. As we work toward that, there's two ways it gets created. The first is we can do it intentionally. We can take the time, we can go through the exercises, we can create a legacy, and we define what it looks like. Or we can go the accidental route, where government and other people will decide what our legacy is. The reality is we're all gonna leave a legacy. That's really not an option. The question is what's that legacy gonna look like? And do you wanna be in control or not? If you do, You've got to do the hard work of creating it and communicating it and planning for it. There's two key areas that are part of legacy. One is the impact we want to have through our business or our life on the people around us. And the other is a series of tactical things that we need to make sure we have in line. Financial goals and objectives. There's a lot of legal things that are important. There's a host of those kind of things laid out in the workbook that you can, can, you can walk through and, and contemplate. 
so that you get your legacy well-defined and you know exactly what you're trying to accomplish. We did a 10-year study through service leadership who does our benchmarking to see what the impact is of planning and participation in community. Same 65 companies over a 10-year period. Back in 2009, those companies were doing a little less than $2 million in revenue, and their value, uh, using service leadership's value calculator tool, was about $450,000 per organization in the market. We got the updated numbers this quarter. Same 65 companies today are doing about $4.5 million, so a little over double in terms of revenue. But those, those companies are worth today over $3.2 million on average as compared to $450,000 10 years ago. Over seven times they have, they have uh, grown in value and it all had to do with the migration Craig talked about of moving revenue into the right buckets. Moving it from product into recurring revenue, for example. You can control your future by learning how to mature your company, but it won't happen accidentally. It won't happen because you show up at IT Nation Connect. It happens when you take what you learn here and you go execute. You put it to a plan and you make it happen every day. We know that in this market, m and hot. First 42 days of the year, there were a dozen deals that happened. It's part of the fabric of what's going on today as this industry matures. So we've got some very specific things we want to help you with while you're here this week. This afternoon, 515, in this room, we're having our first M&A deal crawl. Where we're going to bring together people that have an interest in buying and selling so that they can connect and communicate and learn from each other. If you have an interest in that and you're not signed up, Look up Stu or Kate Applegate. They'll get you signed up, and you can join us this afternoon. We've got three tracks the next two days on M&A, where we'll, you'll be able to hear from your peers that have been through the process, share some of the things they've learned. The easiest part of an M&A is getting a deal done. The hardest part is making it work. And so you want to come and learn from your peers about that. But third, we also want to support you as a company because we are focused on partner success. So if you acquire a non-ConnectWise company through your M&A activity, we're going to give you three months of free software if you purchase one piece of our platform. If you implement two or more tools, we'll give you six months of free software to use during the integration process of M&A. We want to help you succeed in this because we think it's, it's a huge part of growth. We also have recorded webinars around the entrepreneurial journey. They're posted here. I, I did those with Brad Scow and uh, I encourage you to go take a look at the four phases of the journey and implement those in your own company. And finally, if you haven't taken a look at this Forrester research, I'd encourage you to stop and, and do that as well. We uh, asked them to, to really do an analysis of how the ConnectWise platform can impact a business. We know that a lot of our partners buy the products but don't necessarily use them fully. This gives you uh, some insight into what can happen if you really execute and leverage the platform for your business. It'll give you some really good ideas again as to what good looks like. So, it's important for you to really focus on how you mature your company and prepare for the future. It won't happen accidentally. It's got to be intentional, and it only happens when you plan. So use the Planning for Success tools, take the time, do the work, and then execute. With that, I want to turn the stage over to John Ford, come up and talk to us about our focus on security, which is really a key part of driving success and maturity. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank please you. welcome Chief Information Security Officer, Good job. Right. John Cole.
All right, good morning. How's everybody doing? Doing good? Great. Um, as Arlen mentioned, uh, my company, Sienna Group, was uh, purchased by ConnectWise back in November. And um, I am very uh, thrilled to be part of the ConnectWise community. Uh, at Sienna Group, we have been working very closely with ConnectWise for the prior year. Uh, so I, I had come to, to meet a lot of the MSPs. But uh, very thrilled to be here. I've never been to Australia, so this is great. I had an opportunity to speak with some of the folks yesterday and some of the exhibitors last night. Um, but absolutely you know, thrilled to be here. So um, <clears throat> I want to talk a bit about uh, security today, obviously, right? And as I am the thing that is between you and some food and breakout sessions, uh, we're going to try to get through this pretty quickly. I do have um, some other sessions while I'm here, you know, and I'd be happy to uh, talk to folks at a deeper level about some of the topics uh, that I'm about to cover. But uh, why don't we jump right in? Uh, I want to just share some facts about state of cybersecurity, uh, a little bit of what that means here locally, and then a concept uh, called protect uh, your business or protect your house. Um, and this, this is a topic um, that's really first and foremost on a lot of people's minds. Okay. Um, so this slide really should not surprise anybody. Uh, this comes from the Ponymon Institute. And really what it highlights is that um, cyber attacks are increasing year over year. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, the resulting data breaches from those attacks are also on the rise, right? So we're not getting better at this problem at a global level. Um, so what's really behind these attacks? Semantic reported last year that um, the, the, some of the key metrics related to the attacks um, were that you know, increases in things like ransomware, uh, supply chain attacks. And by the way, all of you in here that are an MSP, you are part of the supply chain for your customers, right? So you see a 78% increase there. Business email compromise is, is always on the increase. And as if we didn't have enough bad actors in the world, um, last year there was a 25% increase of new attack groups. The statistics are kind of stunning, but this one is, you know, kind of makes it worse. So PowerShell exploits were um, you know, increased over a thousand percent. So what's this, what does this really mean? What it really means is that there's a changing tide amongst these attack groups um, for the services and processes that they're using to achieve their goals, right? So now they're using uh, very common things that you as MSP use to support your customers. And in security, we kind of call this living off the land, right? So, you know, they're not coming in with some real sexy exploit. They're coming in through RDP or PowerShell, or they're, they're getting into your environments and their goal is to exfiltrate down to your customers. So said differently, folks, and I'm not, I didn't fly this far to scare you, but the reality is, you know, MSPs are a target and you're a very juicy target for these attack groups. You know, generally hackers are very, very smart, but they're also very lazy, right? So if they can find one way in and then capture many and get an economy of scale, that's exactly what they do. So this isn't really good for, you know, MSPs. Um, <clears throat> locally, in 2018, at least nine MSPs here in Australia were hit uh, with attacks from an, uh, an attack group in Beijing called APT10. APT10 started several years ago, um, and, and they're a global nuisance. And they've been, um, you know, started years ago uh, trying to uh, infiltrate the critical infrastructure in the U.S. as well. Um, among the uh, MSPs hit here last year were, uh, you know, uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise and also IBM. Um, outside of the attack groups, <clears throat> locally here, 43% of uh, small businesses have been attacked. Uh, about approximately cost to correct of $2 million for each of those that did suffer a breach. And 22% of the SMBs that suffered a breach here last year ultimately went out of business, right? So this is, you know, really kind of a big deal. We're seeing, what we're really seeing is this massive transfer of wealth um, from, you know, good, good abiding citizens to bad actors. And when you see 22% of companies go out of business, you're looking at a sizable amount of revenue that is not being generated for the greater good, you know, of citizens, right? All right. 
So let's get a little bit better profile who's behind us. Hmm. <clears throat> Has anybody seen Ocean's Eleven? <laughs> I love to use this analogy because it really works, right? So for those of you who haven't, Ocean's Eleven was a, a kind of a funny movie um, about a very well-funded group of people um, whose target goal was to exfiltrate all the cash out of the most secure casino in Las Vegas, right? So well-funded, each one of these persons was hired to do a specific task, and they had a plan, and they were successful. And the reason why that they were successful, right, was because they were two steps ahead of the casino, right? The casino just didn't think, hey, I'm not going to get broken into. Who's going to mess with me, right? I've got all these bells and whistles. Um, <clears throat> so the reality is I use this analogy because, you know, folks, I hate to say it, but you're up against Ocean's Eleven, right? Um, and so nowadays, you know, you have to be secure. If you're an MSP, you have to be secure, right? But when I say those words, it's, you know, it's kind of vague, right? Security 25 years ago meant a couple of firewalls and somebody who could, you know, understand Unix, right? Um, it's not the same today. Security is a massive field. It's a massive field. And yet, when I go out and I talk to some of the MSPs um, over the past year, what I find is that they're selling products and services related to security to their customers. But when I ask them, hey, so what are you doing about security? I get kind of like a blank stare, right? Well, nobody's going to mess with me, you know? Um, <clears throat> so, you know, th this is really a challenge, and it's one of the key things, um, you know, that we're trying to address you know, at a small scale at ConnectWise, but larger scale through our community, right? So kind of the, the, the reference that we use when we, you know, talk to people is, since we're on planes all the time, the, the flight safety, uh, you know, uh, process that you go through when you're taxiing down the runway is when the oxygen mask comes out, please put your mask on first before helping others. And really what we're uh, really trying to explain to MSPs, and we hope that you folks would uh, also um, you know, take this into account, is that you absolutely have to secure yourselves before you can really secure your customers. We don't want you to be part of that 22% uh, metric. But you know, if you think that you don't need to do that and one of your customers would happen to suffer a breach, it's probably likely that you would fall into that category, right? So I mentioned that security is a, you know, a, a big area, you know, and one of the things that uh, I found over the past year in talking to a lot of the MSPs in the U.S. is that, hey, you know, you, you have to own the basics, right? You know, you have to do the, the real basic blocking and tackling. There is no shortcuts in security. I've been in this business 22 years. I've not found a shortcut, and I'm kind of lazy. So if there was one, I would have found it by now. There are no shortcuts, right? And so we have to start with the basics. And when we look at the basics, I mean, look, folks, you have a bunch of great exhibitors out here. They all offer products and services that help with the basics as well as advanced, right? So even when we talk about that, this is a huge field, right? At Sienna Group, prior to the acquisition, uh, our, our goal along those basics was to get to one of the more um, real fundamental items amongst the security basics in the world, and that's this topic of risk assessment, right? It's, it's real simple. If, if you don't know your risks, then you have no chance of correcting them, right? So if you're just flying wild, you have no chance. If you're not measuring your risks against a framework, then you're just guessing, right? And so at Sienna Group, um, we built a platform uh, that basically automates a process of doing a risk assessment against the NIST cybersecurity framework, right? And again, this is very fundamental. There's a lot of basics, just roam the halls out here, and you'll find other products as well. What this product enables us to do, though, is enables us, uh, one, for the MSP to very rapidly uh, assess their risk against the NIST framework. Now, here we are in Australia, you have the Essentials 8. Um, in the UK, they have something called Cyber Essentials. Globally, we have something called ISO. I'm sure everybody's heard of it. There's thousands of others in different industries, right? The NIST cybersecurity framework was kind of created with more of an overlay of mine from mid-enterprise down to small business. So we started and chose this, right? 
Um, <clears throat> so the beautiful thing about the NIST, you know, about this product was uh, we did this, we, we finished it right up before IT Nation in Orlando, and I think I saw a fair, fair amount of show of hands of folks that were there. Um, and what we did was we offered it as a trial for people to use. And what I want to share with you is uh, some of the results of that trial, uh, because we think it's kind of compelling. Um, <clears throat> so today, this product is called ConnectWise Identify. And um, when we rolled it out in November, from November to last week, uh, approximately 256 MSPs participated. Um, they, in turn, assessed 571 of their clients across 18 countries and uh, almost 1,000 assessments created. All right, so it was pretty, pretty impressive. And this was important for us because we were looking for feedback on the product along the way. Uh, and, but we really wanted to see you know, when I'm coming here today, what I really wanted to share with you was, hey, let's take a look at, you know, across those almost 1,000 assessments, what do we see, right? <clears throat> Here's what we see. So on the left-hand side, these are all of the things that are going good, right? Low risk. When you do a risk assessment, um, when I used to do a lot of enterprise risk assessments and people paid us a lot of money for it, you know, I used to always try to tell the CEO the good news before the bad news, right? Uh, they're paying you a lot of money. It's not a good idea to walk in there and, you know, just tell them how bloody they are, right? So what I want to share with you is some of the things that are interesting on the good side. Um, most MSPs are doing a really good job of asset management, you know, configuration management, managing credentials, remote access. Hey, you know what? I would expect this to be low risk. You guys are good at this. You've been doing this for years, right? Very good at this. But let's look at the right side. And I wonder how many of you in the audience would think, if you, walked, if you didn't know this before, would guess these five, right? Um, <clears throat> most MSPs or their customers are not doing a good job on threats. They're not detecting threats. They don't know where the threats are coming from. They don't know what to do with them, right? They may be monitoring the network, but they're not monitoring the network for inappropriate use of their own employees or suspicious accounts. They don't have an incident response plan. So when the pin is pulled on the grenade and boom, it goes off and we have a security incident, that's not the time to create an incident response plan. So they're, they're flying wild, right? And probably my biggest pet peeve of all is that there's a severe lack of security awareness uh, training going on, right? So when I think back to our little friends from Ocean's Eleven, they already know that you're doing these things on the left well. They're not going to bother with it at all. They, you know, they're smart enough to know. But they will own the items on the right, right? So you know, the reason why this information is powerful, in, in just across 1,000 assessments, we're able to really explain to you, these are the top five things that are out there for you, risks for you as MSPs. Now, both the ConnectWise plus our solution partners out here have you know, great, great products and services to counteract these risks, right? And that's what we're hoping to do. We're hoping to you know, be in front of you, work with our ecosystem partners, work with you on this journey to reduce your risk. But when we have information like this, you know, if we had 10,000 assessments created, we would even have better data, right? Um, I can share with you uh, on some of the other breakout sessions more about the product and how it works and whatnot, but I thought it was kind of important for us to, you know, come here in front of you today and share what, you know, the early trial results look like. All right. One of the other products that uh, we went to trial with at IT Nation in Orlando is a product called Perch. And for those of you who don't know what Perch is, um, Perch is essentially a wonderful threat intelligence product that um, comes with its own SOC. So you don't have to have expensive cybersecurity analysts out there trying to determine what the threats mean. Perch does that for you. It's based on an IDS you know, architecture and uh, currently is also incorporating next-gen uh, SIM capabilities for alerting. <clears throat> Um, more information about Perch, you know, you can get from your account manager, but again, uh, I'll be happy to talk to you, you know, talk to you folks about that as well. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is, um, you know, with that early trial that we did, we learned a lot, not only about the risks for you folks, but 
We also learned a lot about the product on things that we wanted to improve. And so, you know, we've made some enhancements to ConnectWise Identify, and uh, now we want to do a new trial, right? And I wanted to come here in front of you to announce this, that uh, globally we're announcing that on April 1st we're going to offer ConnectWise Identify uh, free, you know, a free trial uh, so that you can take you know, a free assessment on yourself and one for your customer. Uh, more information on that will, will probably uh, be on the website. So as I'm looking at the time, um, I want to try to be mindful of that. So what I'd like to do is uh, invite Craig and Arlen back up, and uh, we'll say a nice uh, goodbye to you guys and uh, a, merry, uh, a merry conference. <laughs> so, All right. Thanks, thank John. You, sir. <laughs> Good job. Good job, Arlen. Okay. Uh, we're going to get this moving. So we do, I do want to ask that once this is over, we got to get everybody out of here because we got to split the room up to get it for the next breakout session. But thank you all for coming. We really are honored to be here. Thanks for listening to us, and we'll see you guys at IT Nation. Thank you. Cool. Thank you.